you got the Bang & Olufsen sound system in your Audi too. Well, if you want to make it sound better, stick with me. This is going to get interesting. And to do some YouTube in, in the peanut gallery, just making noise. Welcome back to this journey of fixing the B&O system on the S5 Sportback. Uh, if you've got an A4 or an S4, I think this will apply to you too. At least for these speakers that we're gonna work on today, it's the front doors. We've got some Fidel Pros uh, that we went ahead and used. They match the center speaker that we just did in the previous episode. So go check that out if you wanna see how we did that. And then um, we've got some Arum Cantus AC-165s that we put in the doors for the woofers. And that's gonna give us a lot more clarity, a lot more loudness, um, and frankly, just overall better handling of the stock b &O amps, which work really well. Uh, we've got a three-way crossover system in the front. That includes a, a tweeter in the door pillar or the A pillar. That includes a tweeter in the A pillar, a mid in the door, as well as that woofer in the door. <laughs> got these dang woodpeckers right behind me, just making all kinds of noise. Uh, anyways, I can't tell you how much help Bruce Miranda was on this particular upgrade for all of these speakers getting them matched. Um, this three-way crossover has essentially uh, the mid and the woofer are not the same ohm rating. So we've got a four ohm front mid uh, in the door as well as an eight ohm six and a half or 6.75 inch speaker that is the woofer and um it is extremely extremely difficult to find the the woofers that will work with the system so we're trying to match the ohm loads up with what's on the bno system that they've got in the standard amps because we're not switching the amps out for these speakers so uh anyways uh, we spent a lot of time looking parts express ended up being the place to go that they had everything and um really you know it's paired to make a really beautiful sounding system i love listening to music in this car so uh the next step is you know follow me and we'll get into the install here so this is the woofer for the door uh, what you see here is everything all assembled and when you order it it'll come with uh, the silicone drip um, stopper and then you'll get this uh, this mount with a spacer on there. And that's just making sure you've got enough room for the, for the full depth of the speaker here. Um, and the speakers that I ended up getting are the AC-165. So they've got this weird kind of squared off uh, outside ring, uh, mounting ring. And it doesn't really affect the performance at all or anything. Uh, there's some other ones that are like the Audison um, Primas are completely round and they fit in a little bit nicely, more nicely. Uh, they have a different sound profile than this one. Um, and I did have to make a little bit of a modification to this ring, although if you order these same speakers, let Bruce Miranda know um, and he'll make sure that the spacer accommodates it. I ended up just using a router with a chamfer bit to make sure I could get the speaker to sit down flush in there. Uh, not a big deal for me at all. Uh, I'm a fairly handy dude. So this is it. It's all ready to go in. Uh, Bruce pre-installs the foam on the back and this pigtail, um, which just gets put on to the positive and negative of the speaker on the inside. He's got some uh, some clips on there. And then, uh, and then you're all set to plug in your factory speaker plug right there. And it's, it's ready to go. Everything's color coded. It's super easy. Um, and this speaker is much, much better than the stock. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> uh, but I just thought I'd share what, what came out and what you have to look forward to going in. And uh, I'll try and put the phone in there and record some video switching back and forth to see the between the two, we'll see if it picks it up or not. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say it probably won't. Here you can see the difference between the stock door speakers for the S5 B&O. This is the woofer that's in the lower part of the door. Um, this is the mid that's up by the door handle, and then there's a tweeter that's in the A pillar. So the front is a um, is a three-way crossover. And 
uh, I'm just replacing these two at this time. Uh, these are from the passenger side. These are going in the driver's side. And you can see there's a pretty big difference. Uh, the cones on these are paper. Those are just paper cones here. Um, and this is like a weird, I don't know, two and a half by five or four and three quarters or something. Uh, and this one is a six and a half or 6.75 uh, inch woofer um, and we'll go over the specs a little bit later on these uh, and this is a really nice uh, Fytal um, mid and the magnet on this is just much more substantial than the stock one over here um, same with regard to the woofer you can see there's the small magnet and this one obviously has got a much bigger one <clears throat> uh, different style speaker and um, this is a, I'm gonna say it wrong, but it's an Aram Cantus um, AC165. That's uh, the eight ohm. And it's got a really good um, sound profile for these door woofers. It goes nice and deep, fits right within the range for the crossover um, for the B&O system. All right, so when you order these uh, from Bruce, what you get is you get this base mount, speaker mount, uh, and then he'll include a preset spacer on top of it that's made to fit the ring of the speaker. Now, um, the speakers that I had originally intended to get were not these AC165s, they were actually a different model, and those were sold out and because I wanted to get going and it looked like it was gonna be another month at least before those came in. Uh, we found this model, which actually will work a little bit better for the profile of the sound that I'm looking for. And um, But when we ordered it, we didn't realize that the basket was two millimeters wider. So I had to do a little bit of modification. No big deal. Um, I had a chamfer bit and a router and I wasn't afraid to use them. So I went ahead and made the modification. Um, I've got everything fit in there nice and tight and snug. Uh, when you order this, you get um, this pigtail that connects just really easily on here. Uh, you just got the two clips um, that slide on there. And then uh, and then you get the drip, uh, drip protector here. Um, and then the speakers I ordered separately and then dropped them in. You can actually just order this setup and then order whatever speakers you want. Um, there's a few different options. I'll list links in the description and uh, see what you want. Um, for the mids, uh, these, I really just went with Bruce's recommendation. We found a speaker that met all of the requirements for the crossover, the ratings, um, the impedance and all of that, and uh, something that was the same size. You can see uh, he shipped this to me with the pigtails already on it, and those will clip right into the stock clips. Um, and he was kind enough to go ahead and remove these when you buy them. They've got the four tabs. He removed the two and then put this nice tape over them to dress it. These, by the way, are matched to the center speaker up front, and so they'll all be voiced the same, um, which will help with a nice, clear, consistent sound. By the way, that center speaker upgrade makes a huge difference. All right, so first step in removing the door panel is uh, removing this part here. And then we've got uh, one T20 Torx bolt there. And then there's gonna be two more in this area. So um, <clears throat> I'll try and show you this one handed, but the best way to do this is to start at this end with the trim removal piece and just be gentle um, getting it up under there and I've getting it up under here and then I've found that once you get it in just kind of turning it and that's really difficult to do with there you go and it pops loose and you just kind of work your way around the panel it's super awkward to do with one um, just be gentle, you'll feel, feel it go. Okay, 
so what you want to do is you want to get all of these ones popped loose here. Okay, now once you've done that, it's going to hinge out from this spot right there. So you can see that goes right in there when you put it back in place. And now we've freed up to see this bolt and this bolt. All right, so bolts removed, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. The next uh, thing is to get the whole door card off. And we're gonna start by getting that same trim tool stuck up under here and we'll pop this loose the same way we did with the trim. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, and then you just do that all the way around the door frame and then you're gonna lift up and disconnect the wires once we're done all right to get the door panel off we're just gonna take this piece try it one-handed slide it under here and then you're just gonna twist it and pop it loose we'll do the same thing pretty much all the way around the door panel all right so we popped the door panel off all the way around up to here, uh, all along the bottom and all the way to here. Um, next, we're gonna lift up and pull the door panel off. We're gonna be careful not to just yank it off because there's a few wires in the back and then the um, connection for the door opening latch. So, this is probably not something I can do with one hand. Well, let's try it anyways. I'm gonna put my feet under here and just lift up. Okay, well, there it goes. See, connected to wires, you got this blue clip that you need to pull off. Um, and you got your door latch right there. And then uh, once you get that blue thing off and the door latch, there's this one speaker wire down there. And then you're- All right, so now that the door panel's off, you can see uh, we got our first stock speaker we're gonna remove. Again, just two Torx bolts here and here. And uh, we'll get those out and then we're gonna replace it with the new speaker. All right, so before we pull the stock speaker out, just make note of the clip location. Uh, what we're gonna do just for continuity is, um, since this speaker has a little pigtail on it, we'll, um, we'll kind of zip tie this in the same location just to keep it all nice and tidy, and we don't want this flopping around anyways. All right, just so to keep it neat, I zip tied this here and the clip there um, so that when we put the new speaker in place, it'll be more or less in the stock position. It shifts back a little bit, but the cable's got enough play to deal with that um, because it's made so you can pull the door panel off and have enough room to get to it still. So anyways, uh, mid speaker going in. Next, we'll deal with the woofer. Also thought I would point out, um, you know, Bruce did a nice job with this tape. He had, like I said, ground off the extra tab. Um, you know, these come with four tabs and you can just see where the old one was, but everything fits perfectly. I mean, couldn't be more of a direct replacement. All right, moving on to the woofer. So as you can see, this is just our other speaker that's in the door panel. This is how the stock woofer is mounted kind of that little peekaboo. I don't know. I'll actually measure that and see what size it is, but it's like a two and a half by five or two by four. I don't know. Weird size speaker. Um, and I don't know if it translates. I don't know if I'll end up getting copyright claimed from playing that music, but there's a pretty significant difference as you heard on the video and switching back and forth um, between the the woofer on this side and the woofer on the other side and also the clarity from the mids um, it's just it's pretty noticeable uh, these speakers are the, the new setup is much better so we're going to just uh, we're gonna unclip this 
right over here. All right, so the stock woofer in the doors just gets unclipped here and you just squeeze in and remove the clips. So I'm, I'm squeezing on the side of the clip here to pull it out, it's pretty basic. Uh, and then I'm actually gonna end up pulling, you pull these clips off, just straight off. Uh, and then I cut them off and I actually use zip ties in the new mount to clean things up. And uh, you know, again, just so we don't have wires flopping around back here. So uh, I'll outline that when I put in the new woofer. All right, so as I lined out earlier, I'm just gonna cut these off. Um, it's just held on by some ribbon sticky tape. So I'll just uh, unravel it or use a razor blade and cut these off very carefully. Just pop the subwoofer in, line up the holes. Um, I don't, I didn't put all of the bolts in all of the way. I just wanted to make sure I could line everything up and get it, get the thread started. Uh, so it fit together. <clears throat> um, as you can see, I cut those two clips off. My plan is to just take a, uh, uh, just take a zip tie and come up through here and then secure that there. Um, and I'll do the same, I'll do the same right here. Uh, and then I also oriented this so that I located the clip in roughly the same spot that the other speaker was. So I'm not gonna overthink this too much. I just take the, take the zip tie and slip it through there. There's one. And I'll do the same thing over here and then uh, I'll connect it up and snug it down and that'll be installed. We'll put the door panel back on. All right, so as you can see, uh, wire is secure. Um, clip is also nice and secure and speakers installed bolts are all tightened down door panel ready to go back on all right door back in place uh, with that drip guard you're gonna have to push just a little bit you know tight right here it's gonna it's actually it's gonna fit perfect be a little snug but no big deal um, replace your trim piece don't forget to start with this in here first and again this is probably easier with two hands but the fact that I'm doing it with one should show you that it's definitely something you can do all right that's all in we'll see how she sounds